put in this on Monday, just after a really great weekend that we've just had down at church. On Saturday, we had our Christmas craft fair where there were lots of lovely things for sale that we could start our Christmas shopping with. And there was an opportunity for friends to come out and have a cup of coffee together, all to raise funds for the manse renovations. Even before we were finished clearing up, all the kids were there who are going to be in the pantomime. They were all eagerly awaiting their turn for a practice. And then yesterday, oh my goodness, uh, morning and evening, we had GB and BB enrolment services. The wee ones were in the morning and the church was absolutely packed. Um, downstairs, nearly filled with the young ones themselves and then their relatives, which included their mums and dads and nannies and everybody else who loves them, who wanted to come and show them support. And sometimes the evenings are quieter because it's for the older ones. But again, yesterday evening, the church was full of BB and GB and their families. And that's just it was such a buzz. It was really good. Christmas is coming. The Christmas fair put us um, in the mood for that, though it doesn't seem that Christmassy yet. And the first weekend in December, the children will be able to come and have breakfast and have a meeting with Santa. And that would definitely be putting them in the mood, I'm sure. But over the last few weeks, we have been thinking about um, people's sacrifices. Just last Sunday, we celebrated um, our Remembrance Day service, where we remember the, the human sacrifice of all our young soldiers who went to war in the First and Second World Wars and the wars since. And we think about their um, commitment and, and what they gave up for us to have the relative peace that we enjoy today. And only a couple of weeks before that, we celebrated communion. And that is to remember Jesus' sacrifice where he was put to death um, on a cross for us. Um, he did rise again, so the story didn't end with, with um, that suffering and pain and death. But he rose again to give us an opportunity to have a relationship with him and his father and to experience the forgiveness that that sacrifice means to us now. But we've been looking back. Coming up into December, we're looking forward. We're looking forward to the birth of Jesus um, when he came as that baby. To, from God as a rescue plan for the whole world. And I just want to draw your attention to what we're going to be doing um, for the month of December. We're going to have four Advent Sundays and we're having a prayer walk on those Sundays. Um, well, the committee room will be open probably all week as well as the Sundays. But if you've never been in the committee room or whether you're there every week, it will be an opportunity to go in and have a quiet time, just looking at forward to the birth of Jesus, forward to um, that very special time. That's a, that's a time of year that everybody celebrates and people are always preparing. They're preparing their food. They're wondering, have they got all their presents yet? Have they got all their baking done? Are the travel arrangements made for those who are coming home? But those preparations are nothing compared to the preparations we need to think about, about Jesus coming to be born here on earth. So I would really encourage you to go to the committee room to take that quiet time whenever you're down at church over the weeks in um, December. I think Sarah um, Conway and Ruth Dalzell are going to be busy getting that room ready for us just to take some time out to reflect and think about the gift that Jesus is to us. But Advent isn't only about the preparation for Christmas and Jesus' birth. It's also um, pointing us towards his second coming because Jesus is going to come back. We've got his Holy Spirit here now, but I mean, he said before he left us that he was coming back. And that's a time that we really need to prepare for. Um, we don't get any second chances with that. And if you are um, wondering what, where are you going to be, when Jesus comes back, take that time in the in the committee room to commit yourself to him, to tell him how much you love him, to ask for his forgiveness and to ask him to come and walk with you throughout your life here on earth and so that you can go and be with him 
for eternity. I just want to read um, a passage of scripture from Isaiah, which um, foretells Jesus' birth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for the, the happiness that, that preparing for Christmas brings. But we remember also those who, are, who find it a difficult time, maybe because someone's not here that they would just really wish to be here. Maybe because it's an expensive time whenever they can ill afford it. But Father, we should all have joy in our hearts because you came as the light of the world. And we look forward to celebrating that. We look forward to showing you how much you mean to us. And Lord, we just ask that you will continue to journey with us every day. In Jesus' name. Amen.